How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. Um, we just finished talking to these fellas. It's time to head on outside, I think. We got a lot to do today. A lot to do today. Uh, gross. Let's get out of here. Oh, wait. Oh. I think that guy left his headache pills out, but never mind. Whatever. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershell. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Look at up the sky. Cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships. Clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Your shirt sticks to your chest. The shoulders of your disco blazer grow heavy. The cold finds its way in, in under your skin. You shiver. And the city shivers with you. What is in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean, wave after wave, washing the coast of Martinez with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet. Beyond the bay of Revachal, ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. What is down the shore? Urban coastline. Rain dripping off eternite-covered roofs. Cinder blocks left over from half-finished construction. A defunct research and development building, once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City. End of all lines. Run your fingers through your dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess, flecked with ash from neighbouring coal plants. Smokestacks rise somewhere in the distance. What is in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbour are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Clench his teeth to stop shuddering. Behind the gates, heaps of supply crates. Red and blue metal shipping containers slick with rain. The Greater Rivershaw Industrial Harbour is an artificial mountain range. Immense wealth resides within, and immeasurable poverty in its shadow. And beyond that? La Drissienne. King Driss's... King Driss's Passenger Harbour. Cruise ships flanked by dock arms. Cranes watched over the mouth of the river, distributary. What is across the distributary? Cowron, the lower middle class. Distributary after distributary cuts the city, blocks in half. Seven story buildings trail off into the rain. What's beyond Cowron? A silvery curtain of rain over the houses, the class divide. You've never been there. They don't need the law east of the river. What is in the north? Capeside apartments, tower blocks, crowd one another. 4.46mm bullets still lodged in the war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapsed from mortar hits of a war that was long, lost long ago. Clotheslines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. The morning news. And closer to here? A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree, bloated. Droplets of rain slip from his cold cheeks. What's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snow melts and in Jamrock. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? <laughs> Have a brother in the cut, where the wood at? Why am I not there? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day, of the revolution failed. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock City stretches inland. Look further. In the rain swept distance above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's above? Coalition aerostatics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where the rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. Motherfucker. <laughs> the rain will not let up anytime soon. I'd recommend you put your coat on. I've got my coat on. Alright, we're going to check out this new area we've opened up. 
Because I haven't really had a chance to check it out properly. Can we do anything with this yet? No, it's locked now. That sucks. What is she doing? Well, anyway, anyway. We need to get back in here and up there. Hopefully we can get our shit back. Especially our badge. That's what I'm most worried about. I want my badge. But unfortunately, more than not wanting my- more than wanting my badge, I don't want to fall off a rooftop and die. <laughs> so, we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I do very much want that. I want my stuff. Savoir faire, oh my god, that's like my lowest skill. That's bad, man. Maybe we can get to that, uh, door there. Oh, this is there. There's no way down there, though, is there? Man, what a pain in the ass. I really want my uniform back, man. We can't go out there. I can boost my savoir faire. It's not going to get up much higher than 8% though, is it? Let's be honest. Well, let's see if we can change up our gear. Maybe give ourselves a better chance. Let's have a look at what we got equipped. Something must be reducing our savoir there. Our pants. Time to take our pants off. <laughs> pants change. That's minus one savoir faire as well. We don't need shoes. Shoes are for suckers. Um, <laughs> we have no way we can boost our savoir faire. Well, we could Im improve it somehow. Interfacing. The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hands into. Makes you look cool, calm and collected. As your hand enters your pocket, your fingers brush against something soft yet crinkly. Take the item out. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. Reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. Not familiar in a good way, you might say. There's pain in there somewhere. By the way, the raw materials are most likely exported from Sergei, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sur La Clef, into the apricot flavored chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Hmm, something about it is familiar. And not only to your fingers. Let's have a look at it. It's under interact, is it? A crinkle chewing gum wrapper. The worn label reads Tutti Fruity. It smells faintly of apricots, with a barely noticeable twinge of cinnamon. You feel compelled to point out that there's nothing fruity about cinnamon. It's a spice derived from tree bark. Cinnamon's not a fruit. Can you use wrapper shrug? It seems like that's what the wrapper is doing somehow. This is not about flowers, or bark. What is this about? Why are you looking at this wrapper? Why do I care about this? Good question. There's no answer or secret phrase written on the inside of the wrapper, yet you're drawn to it. Drawn by regret. Stop before you hurt yourself with the tutti fruity wrapper. Throw it away, please. I'll hang on to it just in case. You carefully fold the wrapper into a square before putting it back into your pocket. Lovingly even, despite the strange feeling of regret. Worrying. Well, let's see what our chances are here. 28. I could put one point into Savoir Faire. Let's do it. And then we're gonna just go for it. <laughs> and probably die. 42. <sighs> Alright, people. Here we go. I think that was bad. Like I got so much health. Nope. A tarpaulin cloak with po oh, okay, what did we get? Holy wow, that's high. Doesn't seem dangerous. The lieutenant must be crazy to suggest that this is certain death. Vertigo almost pushes you over the edge.
You could have died there. Shit, 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 I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. Hey, what happened? He sounds genuinely worried. I'm alright, Kim. I, I just can't do it right now. I understand. You can always come back when you're feeling better. It's just a cloak, after all. I'm, like, I'm gonna put a point, my last point, into volition as well. So I'm gonna give myself extra um, morale points. Yeah. Because that morale is always so goddamn low. It's very stressful. <laughs> How do we get over here? It's so close. Like, we're so close to being where we need to be, and yet we're not there. I mean, we haven't talked to the racist guy, Measurehead, in a while. Maybe we can take him on now. We've gotten a lot stronger. I want to put my shoes back on, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. I'm gonna keep the pants though, I like the pants. Hang on, what do the pants do again? <laughs> Minus one reaction speed, I don't care about that. That's already something I'm terrible at anyway. I'm running out of leads here, but I mean I've got leads coming out my ears, but I don't really know how to follow any of them up at this point. That should be nearly done. The victim's armor. Keep searching for the caller despite lacking any obvious leads. We don't have anything of that. Don't worry about the smokes. Karaoke I'm not too worried about. Uh, rest of the armor. Kuno lied to you. Return and confront him. I guess we can do that now. We're already here. I really don't want to talk to Kuno ever again though if I can help it to be honest. I'm sick of him. I talked to Manana about the armor. So? He raises an eyebrow, projecting aggressive indifference. He said thank you. Wasn't too keen on chasing down that armor anyway. Uh, fuck. Okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yeah. He looks slightly confused. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like Jello. Look, pig. He's suddenly your business. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. Whatever, kid. What is this? Trying to be cool with your new arsehole? Kuno was being nice to you. He waves you off. You got fucking bad. You got fucked bad. Now limp the fuck out of here. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. You found your shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phase shifted through the roofing material. Shit, get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. He can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck with you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit, he says to himself, then turns to you. How did you get in there, piggy boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit in there, right? Could I get into the harbour from the roof? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys as gimps? Just gotta fly, pig. I tried that, didn't go so well. Kuno knows. Kuno and C saw you shit yourself. It's okay, pig. Not everyone can face the fear, Kuno style. So there is to it then. Don't be a pansy, just jump. Is that my coat up there? I'm pretty sure it's mine. Is it? Kuno squints at it. You got pretty fucked. Kuno's surprised you still got your head after all that. After all what? Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno taps his nose twice in conspiracy. Kuno will keep your nasty secrets. Kuno's not snitching. He says you climbed up there. He probably saw you do it. That explains the call calluses in your hands. You scaled the side of the building, entertaining the local kids. Yep, that conclusively explains how the coat got up there. What was it, the pig head? Oh, that. He picks a bit of dirt off from his fingernail. Kuno decapitates pigs. It's just a Kuno demo tape. You're trying to send a message of some sort. Uh, Kuno's eyes light up. Yeah, to the both of you, watch your ass and Kuno's down, or Kuno's gonna fuck your head off. Found a plate covered with a powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno's Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? If you're tired and old. But you could have that sparkle in your eyes. What's with the tube of Magnusolum, Kuno? It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? He looks at, <laughs> at you, you like you just pointed at the sun and asked what it was. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag, you fucking... Need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day. Rips mag like a motherfucker. And you could use a barrel. Don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. 
I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the time. He looks at you, eyes bulging. You're not getting this, pig. That completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. Alright. That's all we've got then. 3%. We're never gonna figure out what's going on with him. Is there any more we can talk to her about now? I haven't talked to her in a while. Can't believe you didn't take the shot! Fucking cowards! Waved your gun around like a clown! Next time you point that shit at me, you better take the shot. This kid is way, way worse than the other one. Her knuckles have turned white, holding onto that fence. She's been here for days, seething. How exciting for her. <laughs> Alright, now what? We can go to the smoker on the balcony after nine. We need to find a way into the secret passage. Forgot about that. Can't do that to Wednesday. We gotta get the boots off somehow. Hmm. We're running out of a. Uh, running out of shit to work with here. We'll take the bag with us just in case we can find some shit to take. Never know what we might pick up. How do you get to her? Oh, we can pick up shit out of the streets now and sell it. It's gonna be the only way we're gonna pay for our room. Alright, what's the plan? We haven't talked to this lady yet. Or been in here. We really need to, need to talk to everyone. Welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. The clerk extends a greeting. Be welcome. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. So, are you the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Yes, my daughter. Annette. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing a job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? 10. She's very polite and helpful. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. She's immensely satisfied with the answer. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. Her posture becomes very rigid. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Denial is the way she copes with criticism. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labour. She rolls her eyes. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends how much you pay the kid. Good sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her. As a fund. She's securing a financial future out there. Such criminal behaviour would not happen in more developed countries. In some more developed countries, this sort of thing is two felonies. Child labour and slavery. Those countries will realise they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Her tone is decisive. Not at all angry at the insinuation. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. The lieutenant taps his foot. Okay. The woman before you scans the store, her eyes rigid and tense. Every now and then she nudges her glasses. The girl outside mentioned this place is cursed. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? She blinks. I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? What if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with her pendant, then waves her bony fingers directly at you. See those shelves there? Go. Be drawn. What type of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look for yourselves. She nudges at her glasses. The shelves compel you, don't they? Alright, I'll take a look. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. 
farewell for now, book peddler. Hey, psst. Who, me? Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Again? Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You built it before. They've built it before. It hasn't really worked out yet, but neither is love. So we should stop building love too. Should we stop building love too? I see. Yes, we should all stop building love. This conversation isn't really about love. Try to keep up, okay? This is about the communism you promised to build. Word on the street is, it's going to be 10,000 times larger than any communism previously attempted. Is that true? How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impale all the people who have more than 25 riel in their pocket. It's probably because I don't have 25 riel in my pocket. <laughs> Literally murder all human beings regardless of their political political beliefs. That kind of stuff. Alright, oh, that sounds like me. <laughs> I've said some mildly left-wing things, but none of those. Oh yes, the mask of ambivalence. Don't deny it, you're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that will devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that, so tell me. Do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? <laughs> do we get right down to it? Oh, you've got a machine. <laughs> Roll up your sleeves and start building communism. It's too tiring. Wait, first, what is this communism even about? Failure. It's about failure. I don't do failure. Of course you do. You are failure. You are communism. Absolutely vanquished. Beaten. Curb stomped. Shat on. While everyone else is out partying, having, cal having a callous laugh, you will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. You alone, against every living thing, against every human alive, 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class, towering cities, city blocks of bank men who have the ears of prime ministers, million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother, you against the atom, the charm and the spin, where the world where the whole world failed, matter failed to bend to human will, human will fail to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. Now get to work, comrade. It's too tiring. I don't have it in me. I'm beaten down and broken. Very well, I guess no one will build communism then. Tell the working man it's over, unless anyone has any objections. No objections. It's mathematically impossible to achieve a classless society. Everyone knows this. Did someone mention cocaine? <laughs> Are we doing cocaine? No? I'm sure I heard someone say cocaineism. <laughs> anyone? Anyone else? There's no one? There's no one. Okay then. Lie down and let the water carry you downstream. Goodbye, communism. <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> Everything got real weird right then. I don't even know what I said that made that happen in the first place. Oh well. I guess we're going to have to go talk to Captain Racist and uh, to see how that goes, I guess. Anything more from you, Annette? I'm going to deduce something now. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry, little girl. I'm not going to bother you any longer. I'm sorry. Anyway. We're going to have to talk to the racist guy. Not that one, the other racist guy. <laughs> the really nasty racist guy. Maybe we can throw hands with him this time, I don't know. I, I doubt it. I'm running out of options though, to be honest. Alright, let's have a talk. The unpromising race pupil returns. Know anything about this mug? Show him the mug. He doesn't much as glance at the object. Is this your kind of thing? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. You had nothing to do with it. Does he strike you as the kind of man who puts mugs into the trash? Oh, I can take him on again. Why well, are you not with the Hardy Boys? I'm not the first line of defense. I'm the last. He looks toward the coast defiantly. In addition to these so-called hardy boys, are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. You pick on something artificial in his tone, like he's putting on an act. This is unlike him. He's usually more himself. 
There's more to it. What have you got against them? Fine. They've recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics peddler. It's shameful. Who do you mean? Find out for yourself, endomorphic blob. Interesting. The lieutenant takes a quick note. 83%. Take him out. Oh, we got him with the throat punch. Now we just gotta finish him. Just like that insect took over, a solid strut. Yeah, we did this before. We just didn't beat it last time. Back up and perform a 360 flying spin kick. Oh my god. Is, is that a bad idea? I feel like that's a bad idea. Do it. Oh, dude, I knocked him out. The man lands with a dull thump, like a broken down puppet of muscles and sinew. For a moment he lies stiff, he still tries to keep his head up, dazed eyes looking at you with unimaginable surprise. To your left is the button. Disco Inferno! <laughs> As you slam your fist on the button, the man collapses entirely, his head rolling to the side. Looks like you're the new measure head now. No one is the new measure head. Let's go. Before he gets up, the lieutenant makes haste towards the door. I'm gonna mug him first. <laughs> mug his ass! Man is still knocked out. He breathes slowly and steadily. Take a few moments for him to recover. Oh, we pushed the button so we can just go. We got in. Without having to be a racist. That's exciting. Let's have a look around. Alright, we got books. Another postcard. Dude, there's heaps of stuff here to loot. Let's loot the crap out of this place. Magnesium thing? <gasps> Shades. Plus one visual calculus, minus one drama. Sounds good. Visual calculus sounds much better to me, much more useful to me than drama. And I don't have my glasses that I had last time when I failed. Don't know where those ended up, to be honest. Oh well. Never mind. A standard office filing cabinet. The drawers seem to be locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. Every worker equals member of the board. It's written on top of the flies. What is this one? A giant ass print on the p ass print on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. The radio is emanating strong buzzing sounds. Oh, hang on. I see something. Pretty muddy. I hope so. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world. From Mundi, Grad, and e even Ilmara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol. Cowron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thick thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Volition. Ugh. 42. 42. Whatever's hidden there, here is well hidden. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember Leo. Everett's shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Everett's plants. Sweet opus floor. More banners. All the items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled up. Turn to Lieutenant. Look, Kim. A to-do list. A to-do note with a list of errands for Everett. Everett Clare, probably. The head of the Debradeurs Union. He inspects the note. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a little bit odd on the list. What is so special about this borscht? Code for drugs? Booze? Blood? Take another look at the note. Yeah. Guess we're done. Uh, 
Uh, let's have a talk to this thing, whatever it is. And then we need to wrap it up, because we're out of time. Punch clock slash payphone. An opposing combination of punch clock and payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, tokens unavailable due to stroke. Use change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Oh god, interfacing? Let your muscle memory dial a random number. Have we got any way to boost interfacing? I don't think we do. I don't even think we have any spare, um... Skill points anymore. No, we do not. Oh, well, I don't like our chances, but let's give it a crack before we wrap it up. What do we got to lose? 25 cents, I guess. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. Right now, your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. Useful patterns? Undoubtedly, no. I might try this again later. Sure, why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. Nothing tricky about it. You just do, fail, repeat until it works. All it takes is motivation and practice. <laughs> sure. Thanks for that physical instrument. And with that, we're going to wrap this episode up here. We got stairs to head up. Hopefully, we'll be able to talk to Everett Clear, get the corpse down, get the autopsy done, get the boots off. That'll open up a whole bunch of new stuff now that we can get in here. Um, yeah, and we already know who the killer is, so you know, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.